Hey, welcome back to Jameson's Repair Shop. Well, as you can see the Thunderbirds on the lift. I put the hoist back up. Uh, I moved the, the convertible to the other side of the garage, put my hoist back up. I kind of hurt my shoulder a bit and I was finding it hard to work under the vehicles to do the work. Anyway, what's going on with the Thunderbird? Uh, last one you saw, I did the brakes on this thing. The front brake calipers, rather. We cleaned them up. They're working fine. Uh, everything's still off right now. Um, when I had this up for sale, even though I felt that the ratty look was what people would like, a lot of people didn't like that there was some previous body work done that was kind of coming apart a bit. And, and I get it. I understand that. Uh, it looked kind of scruffy, but that was the intent was to make it look to keep it looking scruffy anyway um, I Decided I would go ahead and do the body work on it. So let's spin you around and I'll show you a little bit what I've been doing Oh, the old garage is a mess right now. Well, it always is. It doesn't seem like it ever not. All right So what's going on here? Well when I got this car there was a dent here in the rocker and it actually broke the filler that was in here and this filler still needs a little sanding, but I can't get the door open very far to do it with when it's on the lift. So I'll have to put it down off the lift. So what I did, I uh, pulled the dent and I took out all the old filler that was in here. Now, if you guys are familiar with these cars, that's a leaded joint originally, but this quarter panel has been replaced at one time and it was replaced with an OEM quarter panel. And it was done early in the car's life because there's only two paint colors on it, not three. So I know it was done very, very early. Anyway, so I uh, refilled that and then leveled it all out. There was nothing else that needed to be done there. It's solid. Right down into there. It'll have to be color matched. But we are thinking about painting this car. So I'm just leaving that part in primer for now. So let's move down to the tail end of this quarter panel right here. So this is an area here also it had a hole right in here, a rust hole, on inside and out <clears throat> in the inside the inner uh, the wheelhouse extension. So I've uh, I have to finish this in here yet. Just I'm working on it still. I need to grind it more and then prime it and all that stuff. But this has been all replaced right from right from here back to about here. Uh, it's been a new piece put in so this is all and it's got a, it's got a little bit of filler on it and it has some uh, fiber filler just uh, in there but it's it's a good piece now it's all metal there's no rust in that anymore got it smoothed out pretty nice so that's that <clears throat> there's still a little bit of work here on this joint right here there's a couple little dents that i want to uh, pull out try to pull a little bit more of that and kind of get it better I sealed this with seam sealer and I kind of just went ahead and tried to color match but like I said we're probably going to paint this car we're planning we're thinking about painting this car all one one color because that was another issue with the sale even though I like the patina and a lot of people do they'll stop you and say I love the car I love the car but when it came to selling it the ones that love the car didn't have money to buy the car anyway so that's that so let's go to the other side and I'll show you what's going on over there and I'm still in the process of that one as well so on this side this had uh, you could visibly see that that had been work done to it at one time and it was filler in it a lot of filler in it and you could you could see that right here and I wasn't trying to hide anything from anybody I just didn't want to touch the work that was done uh, from the previous times anyway, so I'm building uh, The wheelhouse extent or the yeah, the wheelhouse extension. I built that I put in the for the It's not cut out yet uh, Put in the drain For the fuel filler drain in and I have the rubber for it. And I'll put it back on the other side I need to put in a drain hole and put the rubbers back on there, but I was just getting this lower part done It needs to be joined up here and then I have to build this piece here and then I move on. There's some uh, a small bit of work to do on the wheel arch and the wheel arch uh, lip inside and out. And then down here, there was some filler that was starting to pull off. And that's what was underneath of it. And this, I don't believe this was rusted. Uh, when they did this work, I think it was just damaged. Um, they did some, I have to say, some pretty poor body work, but whatever. It is what it is. And you can see the welding that's on this. 
it is like really like they just went and used uh, welding, arc welding or something to fill it. I don't know. Maybe they had a MIG welder. I don't know. But you can see <laughs> it's all bubble gummy. And of course, moisture got behind it because they didn't seal anything and rusted it all. And it looks like they just pushed this in. All right. Well, that's it for the Thunderbird. Oh, one more spot up here on the Thunderbird needs to be done is right here uh, where they, I don't know if you can see it. It's on the other side. Anyway, they, uh, when they put the new quarter panel on, they uh, filled it with filler, but they brass welded as well. Body filler doesn't uh, stick well to brass, so it started lifting off, moisture got under it. Now, I don't think there's any rust holes under it, um, but I'm gonna redo it anyway. I'll rust treat it, make sure it's good and sound before I put some more, I'll put some fiber fill and then I'll put some plastic filler over it. Anyway, that's it. So also uh, on this update, I've been out uh, putting the diesel heater in the van. So let's take a run out there and take a look. Doing some, uh, also doing a bit of uh, yard work cleanup. It's uh, wet and rainy today, so we're not doing it today, but we're getting these, the yard cleaned up a tiny bit, get ready for winter. All right, so let's go out to the van and take a look. Right out here in the van and uh, I'm gonna turn it on get the heat going in here it works really well I'm not gonna do a video on the install on it there's like the world doesn't need another uh, diesel heater install video especially from me anyhow I'll just show you where it is I got a couple pictures tell you what I did quickly I had to cut out the battery box out of it uh, I put it under the seat and I'll show you where that is and we'll get her going. So I put the diesel heater under the uh, passenger's front seat. And you can see the duct right there. And uh, still have tools and stuff laying around. So let's see how, how quiet this baby really is. So I have the controller. It's Velcroed right up here above the driver, uh, the passenger seat. And I'll just turn it on. So this is a very inexpensive diesel heater. I paid 96 bucks delivered to the house, but it, it puts the heat out. I can tell you. All right. So I fired it up. Uh, you can barely hear it run. It will get louder as time goes on. Uh, it takes about four or five minutes to wind up to get heat coming out full speed. Um, but it, it throws the heat. I can have this place from, uh, 15 degrees Celsius. I tested it from 15 degrees Celsius to 25 degrees Celsius in 13 minutes. So it's pretty good and you may be able to hear the clicking of the fuel pump maybe not whatever it doesn't matter that's what I've been doing out here in the van well there it is the heat's on she's throwing heat it's a very quiet heater a lot quieter than the suburban propane heater that's in this thing that came with it now the suburban if you want heat fast like within seconds that that's the one but it burns quite a bit of propane and it's very noisy when it runs. It wakes me up at night and I can't, uh, I can't take that any longer. This diesel heater is extremely quiet compared to the Suburban. I have some upcoming videos. I have a dash cam review to do with a, a company sent me a dash cam. I ordered a top for the Cabriolet. So we'll be doing a video on the top for the Cabriolet. I also have uh, an addition to this diesel heater that I want to do a, uh, a video on. Uh, that's kind of a cool thing for if you have one of these diesel heaters uh, As you know a lot of these these heaters once you turn them on you manually they'll they'll kind of work up and down But they don't really shut off so there I found this company that makes a, a thermostat control for them and I've ordered one But I don't have it yet. So I'll be doing a video on that. Well, that's it everyone. That's what I've been up to Thunderbird work diesel heater work and yard work and planning a trip down to Arizona in mid-November through to mid-December, store the van down there, come back over Christmas, go back down to Arizona in January for the month of January. Then we'll see if I store the van down there until spring or um, bring it home at the end of January, early February. I guess that'll depend on the weather. Um, we do like to go down again uh, late April, May, uh, early May, before it gets too terrible hot down in the Sedona area and we like to do that so maybe we'll just leave the van down and my wife and I can fly down and uh, pick the van up 
and go from there. And uh, that's it. I uh, hope everybody has a great week. I just want to let you know what I'm up to and we'll see you in the next one.